Welcome back to the Tide Jeremy Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with a weekly news and review for September 17th, 2023, 2023. We do have a lot of news this week, but a little light on the Transformers news. That doesn't mean there's no news, but doesn't mean it's all new news. Some of it is just updates and reissues. And issues. We have a Hasbro PulseCon event schedule uh, September 22nd coming up. Uh, this is pretty much what we've seen so far of it. We'll talk about this a little bit. Got more pictures of this Elkhorn. We knew it's coming, but now we see everything it comes with. And I'm super stoked and excited. I hope they do all 19 figures. We'll talk more about that. There's more Joe news, like new news, that is a surprise but should not have been at all. Why are we surprised? We shouldn't have been. And there's some Star Wars stuff up for pre-order, some stuff coming in. Just kind of, just some general miscellaneous Star Wars stuff going on. And more. Coming up. All right, as usual, starting out with the show Z stuff that's coming in. This is coming soon, $38 for a fourth party MP12 sideswipe. This is not the plus, it's the standard first one. But if you missed out on the Takara, Takara refuses to reissue it, and you can't get your hands on accessing one for 38 bucks, not a bad deal. So I like to throw stuff like this up here. Then we have some G1 stuff. This is a G1 Minibot Beachcomber, $23.99. The appeal to this is you could go get this figure for like 10 bucks on eBay. A, a, a loose, used, in decent condition one. The, the appeal is having it in the card back. So if you missed out on any reissues in the past, here it is. And this is a fourth party. It's not an actual reissue, $24. And then we have another one, and it's a Headmaster. And I think they're doing pretty much all the Headmasters, which is great. $55. If you've seen prices of boxed headmasters are crazy and 55 i think is a reasonable price shipped to the u.s uh other countries have people have told me in other countries that shipping's a little bit more but anyway the last one we have for show z power glide is now 109.99 on sale and they did have it down to 99.99 on sale and so what does this mean why is this an issue or a deal well it's going to roll right into a topic we're about to talk about but fans toys power glide is off by now it's like $15 off when it was $25 off they credited me back to my account $25 they did it for everybody that pre-ordered it got it in and within 30 days if they mark it down then they they give you back that credit that's awesome that's another thing I love about about show Z also the TH reviewer code helps me get more stuff helps me get on a list to get some free samples and it helps me get some kickback credit to buy more stuff to review some of the things I might not have bought but I have a little bit of credit and I'm like yeah I might as well do this and review it thanks to everybody that supports me on show Z with the TH reviewer code okay so this is ages three and up I have absolutely nothing against them I've never heard anything bad about them but they are up there pricing there's close to 420 uh, this is a price that is getting high at 420 uh, the, it's it's flaming up the price there now they're for whatever reason, seeing what other people price and, and upping theirs just a little bit, I don't really know why. I'm just going to hold my breath on this and not inhale or exhale anymore about this price change. But I do have something I want to say. All right, so Friday's video, there was quite a bit of interaction. We were talking about the price hike. We were talking about this uh, kind of situation we're seeing with the Jester and the prices. But I did title it 91% increase on price based on Goose, and that was, in the video I clarified that, that Goose was originally 115, sort of MSRP that doesn't really exist in third party, but usually there's a number and most people are around that number. Show Z's price was 110, and then a double deposit deducted. This is my exact order. I had to go back to my order, I had to cut out the section to show what the price was and all of that. And so with that, that's where, I didn't actually get my numbers from this, I went from the 115 price. And so I was comparing apples to apples. So we'll find out when Shozy puts their actual price up, apples to apples, you know, what it's increased. But there's a lot of reasons this happened. But people who didn't collect prior to 2020, like 2019, when I placed this order, they don't know this information. And this is about giving information and sharing of information. That's all it's about. So it's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about sharing information uh, and, and factual information. Not like your 6 o'clock news. All right, X Transboss has put out some pictures of their test shot of their upcoming combiner speaking of combiners 
we we uh, know this is going to be like 150 a figure too it's gonna be a 900 dollars combiner minimum uh, unless they raise their price as they go, take it up to a thousand, twelve hundred. I don't know. Who knows? But this is how it looks, more or less, in the bot mode, and uh, it looks pretty good. Very G1 esque, and uh, looks like it's gonna be painted head to toe. And that is a little scary on a combiner if there's too much paint on this. So I don't know 100%. That just kind of appears like they're gonna have it very well painted. It might just all be bare plastic, but it does look really good. They've been kind of going with the premium deco lately. That's one of the improvements that they have been making, sort of like what they've already done with KFC, and KFC was well painted. x Transbots was usually bare bone plastic. Now they've gone with painting, but anyway, this looks really good in all modes, and let's hope that they are learning as they go. would like to see the finisher Defensor, though, because I know a lot of people feel that same way. Okay, so Toy Joe Joe is putting out an exclusive boxed version of the Motif and Pitch. Now, from my understanding of this, they're opening a new branch inside of an art gallery in San Antonio. And this is more or less a packaging change. It's not a change to the figure. It's not like a specific figure. It's just a packaging variation to get both of them in the same box, which does look kind of cool. It's, it's quite interesting that they're doing it. I've recently reviewed these, both of these, in one video on my channel, and I don't see any difference other than the fact that the outside box is different. And I have to admit, the outside box that they're shipped in, it's just brown box special boring. This is kind of cool. Also with Toy Dojo, they have put up their price for the Lewin Resources version of a four foot tall Metroplex. Uh, this thing's gonna be a grand, according to what their page says a thousand dollars so uh this is the first time we've seen the price for this and shows he has a pre-order price of a hundred like a hundred dollars down so yeah it's a pricey one and they're doing it though this thing is going to happen Lewin resources lives in big scale figures and so it doesn't surprise me that they're doing this and they're making it happen and they made that ginormous version of Optimus Prime which was an upscale of MP10 and they're making this guy so uh, really cool and exciting and it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Okay so this week MMC's got milk? No they got comparison pictures to Planet X so uh, they're comparing their reissue of their Deathsaurus to Planet X I believe Planet X is on the right. That's my belief. Here we go with this. Yeah, I, I am pretty sure now. Looking at it in the alt mode, it does look a lot more like Planet X on the right. Anyway, that's how it looks. It's pretty cool. I think that every one of these options is great, and you can't really go wrong with any of these options. There's also X Transbots making theirs, and X Transbots, I believe, will be the biggest when it's all said and done, but looking pretty good. XM Studios is showing off a G1 RC and Prowl statue at the Pop Toys show in Singapore. And I have to say they look really good. They don't look very G1. They look G1, but stylized or actually they look aged. They look, aside from RC a little bit, but they look older. They look like they've been around, you know, another millennium or something. And so they've took, taken some battle damage and all that, but they do look cool. And I do like that you have the alt modes with them. So a lot of cool stuff with the statues going on right there. So trans fans is showing off this. And this is a three of their own designs of their own transforming deformation figures. And they look kind of cool, actually. They, they really do look kind of cool. And here's the green missile launcher kind of thing. So that's quite an interesting look that's going on right there and then there's going to be this one here that is a tank or a g2 megatron no not trying to be a g2 megatron trying to be a tank maybe a terror tank who knows maybe they'll come with a little pilot terror tank little warrior thing then there's this one here which is a blue jet now i don't know about exact names and i didn't really try to translate anything just pass along some pictures. It looks like some transforming fun. All right, so we're going to have a peaceful transition from Masterpiece to Legends. And here we are with Legends. And looking at this, we see a comic version of Sludge coming from New Age, of course. But I'm not going to lie. When I saw that shiny silver on it, I was captivated. Okay, I'm still captivated. That shiny silver just got me. 
I don't know if I like all the other colors on it so much, but that shiny silver got me, and these look great. And their Grimlock, though, is almost perfection. The the first one that came out, the one I got, almost perfection. So uh, I've got to say, I'm down with getting a set of these because they look so good. There's also this one here, and I didn't catch what the name of this one was. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I'm not finding the name on that, but this was posted by June King. And this is a purple and kind of like a lime green look to it. So that's pretty interesting. There's also the dino mode. The whole point of these pictures are to show all the variations that they've shown so far, which looks great, a whole lot of fun. But yeah, just crazy colors. And this is something that you don't get in Masterpiece. You don't get this many color variations because of the, the price of producing all of those. They're smaller and they can kind of get away with all this. And that's kind of cool. Okie dokie, Dr. Jones. We have Iron Factory, Iron Samurai Series, IF EX62, Akataki. And this is the packaging shots. This is a case of them getting shipped out or maybe they're just stacked up looking funny, but there we go, moving through. If you're into the Iron Factory stuff, then get excited because this should be coming soon. So Kang Toys put out pictures of their Mini King Mini, and it, you probably might get a little confused at this point about which one's which and what they all do, and that that's okay, because I got the pictures here. So you're gonna see what's going on with this guy. Here he turns into this. Looks pretty good in all modes. It, it, I'm so surprised how different the little ones are than the big ones. So, because I got to review the same one in the Mini versus the masterpiece scale and they are way different so i really thought they just shrink them down completely different engineering well i wouldn't say completely but at least 70 percent different and then here it is in the combined mode this is what this particular one is going to be doing in the combined mode so you know and that looks cool and really the only legends scale predaking option out there on the horizon for a long time and DX9 is dealing out more pictures of their Legend Scale Double Dealer. A lot of fun right there. And I feel like they had these pictures last week, and they only gave us one, and then waited a week. <laughs> just They did the photo shoot all in the same day, and they're like, yeah, we'll drop these in a week. Yeah, or maybe it was just three days later. Feel like a week to me. But anyway, looks really good. I think they're doing a great job with it. And DX9 is usually very reasonably priced. So uh, I think this is a great offering, and this is exactly why Legends is doing so well, because there are several companies that are making Legends figures, and they're not all making the same exact thing. And we got another picture. This looks to be a prototype of the Braylon Rotten Toys, Toys OP. Uh, this is going to be a 4.72 inch or 12 centimeter Optimus Prime from the live action movies, and... Whichever one, I'm not sure which one. Is it Dark of the Night? Rise of the Beast? I don't know. One of those versions. And so getting it in the Legends scale. So I'm not going to lie. Uh, if I can get it, if this goes through Show Z or somewhere that I can actually order it, I'll pick it up and have a look at it and take a look at it because uh, pretty interesting to start seeing these in the Legends scale. I don't know how big of a market there is for Baver stuff in Legends scale, but I'm sure there's a market. I think this will be an excellent transition from third-party stuff into Hasbro stuff, the mainline. And, well, there's still some third-party in the Hasbro mainline, but this is very impressive. This is a homemade print from Louis Gallant, and he's put a lot of time, effort, and work into this, so huge shout-out to him for making his own. I, I will have to say I feel like this is for the mainline. This is for mainline Hasbro scale. But it is extremely impressive. And I, it's his own design. It's not like he's just directly copied or just went somewhere on Thingiverse or whatever, wherever you get these files, the STL files. And he made it himself. Very, very impressive. I am uh, really impressed. And it, it almost like, hey, you're going to start making these for other people to buy? That would be awesome. I mean, you could, in this day and age, make something like this and sell it. But... Uh, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying that something like this, there's a market for it. People would love this. Even if you only made like one every three months or something. But uh, this is impressive. I'm impressed. I really like the way it looks. 
It looks pretty sturdy. You can see some points where it kind of leans just a little bit. I don't care. I think this looks fantastic. I think they did a great job with it. So speaking of big and transitioning big to big for Hasbro, they're reissuing their Fort Max. And so there's a lot of good to the reissuing of this. There's a couple of negative points that I'm going to point out. They're not big negative points. But the plus is this is going to be available to people to buy again. And I remember when there was the whole Ollie's. People were reporting that they were getting them at Ollie's for like 50 or 60 bucks or something. And uh, that was mind-blowing that this thing was that cheap. And they were showing up in, in pallets for $50 at Ollie's. Now they're going to reissue this for 200 So it's like so strange what a difference a few years makes. But it's a good figure. And it's pretty G1. It's pretty darn G1-esque. And it's, it's like an improved G1 version. And it looks good. So people that have missed out can get it without having to pay like $350. Really, it hasn't gone crazy on the secondary market that much. So so with that, uh, you can save a little bit of money by waiting. But you'll have to wait till September or October of 2024 to get this guy. But pre-order it now. So we've got this Hall, is it Hallathon, uh, PulseCon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're kicking off with the Legacy Evolution Armada Universe Power Links Hotshot and Armada Universe Jolt. It's an exclusive. And so when they say it's exclusive, that's exclusive to them. <laughs> that's from Pulse. Here's the thing. I'm going to talk about this one. I'll talk about the rest of the PulseCon stuff just by itself, but most people that tune in this channel that want to watch Transformers Zoos can get it all in one shot, and here it is. So if you want this, then September 22nd between 11 and 4 uh, p.m. exclusives go live for pre-order. So at which time they go live for pre-order. So if you want to get on this, I don't know if this will sell out or not, but when you hear the word exclusive, then there's always that, that chance. And we're going to see an exclusive that I didn't think would sell out that sold out, and uh, a lot of these exclusives are selling out. And I'll, I'll give my thoughts on that here in a bit. Now, since there's very little Hasbro news, I think they're trying to save up some stuff for PulseCon that there's not a whole lot of Hasbro news. But I would say this DNA, DNA Design Original versus Upgrade Kit for this guy here. So this is their Upgrade Kit for Leader Class Rise of the Beast Scourge. And I have to say it looks way better with the upgrade kit now what do you get with said upgrade kit you get all of this stuff so if you want to upgrade these i didn't check no there's no price yet. these usually run about 50 bucks or so and and it's funny too you're buying a 55 dollars figure and then a 50 dollars upgrade kit but i think it looks way better with the upgrade kit so just want to throw that out there if you're into this stuff all right, so yeah, it was a week week of news for Hasbro, but getting into some other stuff, a lot of other stuff. Uh, Super Seven, this is your last day to order this. As I'm recording this, uh, you've got less than a day. Well, no more than a day, a little over a day to get this. So by the time you're watching this, less than a day. So you have till midnight central on, and you know it's still strange. I think they. It's based on your time zone, too. It's, I don't know how they do that. But you got up till 11.59 on 17th to order this. And it is 650 bucks plus tax plus 100 shipping. And I don't think you get taxed on the shipping. So that's the cool part about splitting out the shipping. Now, there are currently 3,700 backers right around there. And you need 5,000 to unlock the tiers. But it's getting produced no matter what. And this is going to be probably one of the lowest run crowd funds in a long time there's not a ton of thundercats collectors but i figure i'd bring this to your attention i did make a video about this yesterday and uh, there's mixed results i'm surprised mixed results i i think price and then size do bother people a lot when it comes to this okay let's go ahead and dive right into gi joe there's a lot of moving parts for gi joe this week mostly because of the fact that uh there's just different information coming from different places okay so i'm hearing this week that the second run of the mind benders are showing up now what does this mean for you if you missed out if you missed out then this is a good time that we're going to see an influx of second run so possibly more people selling them and you could snag on the secondary market for closer 
to the original price. And that's my thought. So as they start flooding in, watch the Ebays and the Facebook groups and all that kind of stuff, and maybe catch one closer to the retail price or just hold out for yet another reissue. But they said they are not making it like this again. They might come out with them just bare bones with a couple of accessories, but not with the whole set. But anyhow, that's, I'm just giving you a heads up. This might be the best time to buy one. Okay, so the Hasbro Pulse exclusive snow job. I absolutely love snow job. I love the vintage one. I love him as a character and I, I just love everything about snow job. This is great. I got mine in, but I only ordered one. I actually had to cut like a thousand dollars worth of pre-orders to pay for everything else that I'm buying. And I cut my extra one of these I was ordering. They're sold out and it's their exclusive. It's sold out. I'm surprised it's sold out because it stayed up in stock for a long time. And I'm starting to wonder, is this going to be how they go? Leave it up for pre-order. Let all the people pre-order the ones they want. And when they come in, they can have them. And then it's sold out. Uh, the thing about the, the Trouble Bubble is that it's sold out too. And I thought after like a week or two of them filling orders that they'd, it'd be back in stock. Will this guy come in back in stock? I don't know. I don't know what kind of game they're playing or if it's literally just uh, all of it's going to be pre-ordered. They're starting to switch to a Super 7 model where you just uh, you, you pre-order it. They make that many and that's it. I mean, that would be fine if they did it, but they just really need to let us know. And we have some new stuff. We have Target exclusive and Pulse has a few up. The classified Python Patrol Televiper and Cobra Flight Pod Trouble Bubble. I think this looks rad. rad -a cool But I, some people probably don't like it. Uh, I went ahead and had my wife pre-order me one. And so, uh, yeah. Sweetheart, would you pre-order that for me? She uses all the Target. I really don't like messing with Target. I feel like her stuff never gets canceled. Mine gets canceled. She'll be the one to click the OK, don't cancel it. And she's quick on the draw with that stuff. So, so yeah, she's helped me. She She's the only reason I had a Viper for a while there. So, uh, anyhow, getting this one. And then there is... He's a boat man without a boat. It's got a Python Patrol Copperhead and... I gotta say this, I hated Python Patrol and Tiger Force back in the day when I was a kid. And I hated them because I wanted the, the versions that looked like the cartoon, not any other version. But as an adult, I actually chased down, I actually hunted down versions of the Python Patrol versions and the, the Tiger Force ones more than the standard versions as an adult collector just because I like the color variation. I'm okay with these. I'm fine with these. I'm really fine with them because if you wait long enough, they always go to clearance. Well, this one probably will, but, but the next one probably won't. Python Patrol Cobra Officer, and it's only a, a matter of time till we see pretty much everything remade in Python Patrol and stuff. But I think they look cool. I don't got a problem with them, but I didn't pre-order Copperhead or this officer. I have a feeling that these will kind of sit at retail like we're seeing right now with the Viper. Is it a Viper? No. Is it a Viper that's there? And then Dusty? I think that's what's just like clogging up shelves right now. But these might sell a little bit better. Okay, so this is a teaser for the Super 7 Cobra Mothership. We've been kind of confused about that whole SDCC setup and how we saw the Mothership there. What's going on with it? Will they make it? Was it just a prop? But... I believe it is for the reaction line, and I believe it's definitely not to scale, but it's something that's never been made before and probably never will get made again. And so I'm curious about price. Since they're doing the teaser and kind of building it up, it's probably going to have like $150, $170 price point. But uh, I'm curious what they do with it, and I'm looking forward to it. No way at all it is for Ultimates. No way. It's just absolutely no way. But anyway... Uh, as this says here, launching October of 2023, learn more at G.I. Joe.com, G.I. Joe Mothership. Okay, so Diamond Select is showing that in stores this week, 9-13 of 2023, Cobra Kai, Invincible, and Lord of the Rings. So this is the stuff that they say are going to be in the stores. Uh, the Cobra Kai figures, Series 2 assortment, are $25 each. The Invincible Deluxe Monster Girl Action Figure Box Set is 40 Lord of the Rings Gallery PVC Diorama is 60 bucks. So, there it is, and lots of fun. 
Okay, so we've got better pictures this week of Elkhorn, and I gotta tell you that this is another exciting release for Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, I got a whole lot to say about this. I'm gonna try to cram it in real fast. I'm just gonna say, the problem with NECA making Dungeons and Dragons is that there's 19 characters, and they're already on their fifth character. That's 14 left. NECA has gone crazy with over 100 TMNT. Finish this line. Give us all the next 14. The reason that they're able to put out an Elkhorn like this and have confidence is because he's a really common character on the secondary market, meaning that more people had him back in the day and have an association with him. Now you get into the, the harder to find ones, like the Hockler and uh, Mercyon. Uh, what else is kind of hard to find? What are the ones that people don't associate? Deeth? So those might be a little harder to sell, but this obviously be pretty easy to sell. Here's all the gear that he comes with, and it's cool. This is also another one that you wouldn't mind having a couple of extra ones for just, like, dwarfs in your collection. And so, uh, there's, I mean, I could see them doing all of them. Melf, uh, just going to town with all these characters would be a whole lot of fun. Uh, but, but anyhow, this is the next one coming out the gate. And uh, they got the Zarak, is it Zarak? And Strongheart, I actually saw him at Toy Base 10, so they're out there. So this past week, we did see the Lady Slither come and go. I actually woke up and was like, oh, that's two hours from now. Was working on a video, and then I actually wrapped up that video and looked and said, oh wow, that's should have ordered it two hours ago, and I went on and it was sold out. And the odd, weird feeling was I didn't even care. Because if she was 20 bucks, I would have been a little upset, but when you're out $45 after tax and shipping, it stings so much that it's like, ah, I got $45 to spend on something else. Especially when I've been canceling so many pre-orders lately to try to just keep up, keep my head above water, that I truly am starting to question my own commitment to Masters Universe. Because I missed her, I wanted her, I planned on ordering her, I was going to order two to make it worth the shipping, but then I thought, well, that's like almost 100 bucks that I did not have to spend, so I could buy some other stuff. Okay, so Hasbro sent through press release detailing the good stuff set for Hasbro PulseCon and the online event will take place on September 22nd from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern and uh, Pulse Premium members can dig into their pre-order starting at 4 p.m. Eastern while general public view the general losers get the access at 5 p.m. Guess what? I joined the ranks of general loser. My premium is expiring. and I don't know if I'm going to re-up, but... Uh, I'll find out about that. So, with that, uh, Hasbro reveals the jam packs. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff in there. Uh, you're going to have Dan Larson and Thu Adams that are in this, so that's that's a lot of fun. I hope Thu uses a whole lot of really crazy words that I haven't heard yet. And then uh, Pop Culture Celebration for Fans continues. Uh, announce, exciting announcements, the iconic brands Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Dungeons & Dragons, Magic the Gathering, and Premiere collaboration brands uh, Marvel and Star Wars plus guest appearances so and oh oh they're gonna talk about selfie series ooh updating the stuff like anybody cares anyway uh, I'm looking forward to see what they have to say and uh, I might have to re-up that I just hate spending 50 bucks on that premium by the way if you don't pay up for that premium you're definitely not a loser except you will lose your opportunity to buy that stuff that's the only losing that's going on there but you're not losing your 50 bucks okay so we've got this job the hut set that is up for order at shop disney i don't know if you go to shop disney and use that stuff i haven't bought anything on shop disney in like years i don't i just don't that's me but it, for whatever reason it's there now okay so we have this the vintage collection obi-wan and darth vader showdown two-pack for 40 bucks revealed and you get two different carded figures in the set and that looks good it looks nice and if you want this then it's a fan channel exclusive meaning that pretty much online places have it okay so pre-order the snow trooper holiday edition and it's the uh star wars black series version only at target so these are cool and fun. I only bought the Boba Fett one. I might get another one if I see it, like on a good price or something. But 
I very seldom see them marked down. And oddly enough, my Walmart had one pop up just randomly, just on a shelf. Like, there it was. Just one. Someone must have returned it or something, but... If you're into these, pick them up. You know, I really was interesting. I was watching a live stream the other night and uh, talking about recolored G.I. Joe classifies over at Jay Bartlett. And it's funny because how long till we start seeing this in G.I. Joe classified? I mean, what would the classified, J.I. Joe classified collectors, would they get excited about it or upset about it? I don't know. But would they support it? And then we have some news on the Lando show. Looks like the Lando TV series is now going to be a movie. And uh, I have to admit, I, I watch <laughs> I watch the Ahsoka. I'm not upset about it or anything. I'm, I'm just watching it. It's okay. It's not the greatest thing ever. And I have I guess I, my bar is really low for my expectation out of modern Star Wars. That I can just accept that it is what it is. Uh, how low will the bar need to be for this? I don't know. You know what? The bar and expectation for Star Wars media is kind of low right now. That this could be good. It could be a sleeper hit. Alright, so if you got 40 bucks and you like the vintage collection, you can get a black chrysanthemum over at Entertainment Earth. And so, yeah, coming in November. So let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. And what else is going on out there that's really cool. Like and subscribe to do your hangar out.